Well, yeah, I had a feeling this was going to happen, folks. Should have made a video on it earlier with the predictions. But anyway, welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, Live Action Little Mermaid has a tie-in book, and it seems to spoil the ending for the movie. And I'm going to say seems to, not definitive. That way there is room for reasonable doubt, so to speak. But yes, a tie-in book reveals now Ursula will be killed or defeated by Ariel instead of Prince Eric. Which kind of goes against the whole uh, original story, you know. But yeah, this is by Spencer Berkeley from Bounding into Comics. In an outcome so predictable, <laughs> one could have seen it coming from Oceans Away. An official tie-in book for Disney's upcoming live-action Little Mermaid has revealed that the film's climax will see Ariel rather than Prince Eric as or in the animated original, put an end to Ursula's villainous machinations. A distinct deviation from the original Ariel's turns, or from the original Ariel turns into an ethereal soul after refusing to murder Prince Eric and his new wife, ending in Hans Christian Andersen's original fairy tale, the ending to Disney's 89 animated to, or animated took or take sorry folks on the story sees the titular mermaid having attempted to stop the witch from gaining the power of King Triton's trident at the mercy of a newly empowered now kaiju sized Ursula yet just before the sea hag could crush both Ariel and her kingdom Ursula is stopped by the quick thinking of Prince Eric, who puts an end to her reign of terror by goring her with the broken bow sp or bowsprit of the ship. And then lightning freaking strikes the uh, tip and puts an end to her. Unfortunately for fans, though, admittedly, though admittedly entirely unsurprising, Given Disney's corporate direction in recent years, it seems the live-action Little Mermaid has done away with the idea of Prince Eric having a significant heroic role to play in the final battle. Instead, it seems Ariel, portrayed by Halle Bailey, will be the one to deliver the final blow against her nemesis. This change was first publicly unveiled uh, to the public on April 15th, courtesy of Twitter user the JC Green who shared an excerpt from author Ashley Franklin and artist Paul Kellum's illustrated tie-in book to The Little Mermaid, Make a Splash, where an Ariel can be seen behind the wheel of Eric's, or of Eric's ship, making a course for Ursula's gigantic form. The new powerful Ursula seems unbeatable, but Ariel refuses to give up. Reads Franklin's description of the scene, she steers a wrecked ship into Ursula and defeats her. Wow. Really? Freaking wow. She revi or the revised ending appears to have been inspired by Broadway's adaptation of The Little Mermaid, wherein rather being defeated by a physical blow from Eric's ship, Ursula is defeated when Ariel smashes the Nautilus shell around her neck which is the stage production contains all of her evil power rather than the young victim, her young victim's voice. However, it should be noted that though Ariel delivers the killing blow to her enemy in the Broadway play, this change was not made at the detriment of Eric's character or involvement in the story as he is still shown throwing himself into the fray and using the ship to defend his love interest and make a last stand against the witch. Notably, this is far from the only change Disney has made to Ariel's story, as per iconic Disney composer Alan Menken, who not only provided the soundtrack for the 89 original, but has also been tapped to return to the live-action remake. Two of the animated classic songs have been updated for modern audiences. So yeah, basically they're changing it because it's not fitting with 
today's modern poisonous sensibilities. There are some lyric changes in Kiss the Girl because they have gotten very gentle, very sensitive about the idea that Prince Eric would, in a way, force himself on Ariel. Mencken explained to Vanity Fair, We have some revisions in Poor Unfortunate Souls regarding lines that might make young girls somehow feel they should or they shouldn't speak out of turn, even though Ursula is clearly manipulating Ariel to give up her voice. Further, according to Bailey herself, the live-action film has definitely changed that perspective of just Ariel wanting to leave the ocean for a boy. Um, that was never the... Uh, that was never it to begin with. She wanted to leave the ocean to be human before she even saw Eric in the cartoon movie. She had a fascination with human culture. Her cave of surface wonders, basically, was a bunch of things that made her fascinated with humans. It wasn't until she saw Eric that she fell in love with him. But she, before that, still wanted to be on the surface. But yeah, these idiots have no idea what they're talking about. Disney, that is, not bounding. It was way, or it's way bigger than that, she told the Luxury Culture Magazine edition. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life, and what she wants. As women, we are amazing. We are independent. We are modern. We are everything and above, Bailey then declared, seemingly ignorant of the fact that Ariel's desire to explore the surface world was sparked long, long before she met, or first met with Eric. Yeah, as I just said. And I'm glad that Disney is updating some of those themes. Little Mermaid is set to shipwreck into theaters on May 26th. I absolutely love that. It's set to shipwreck the theater. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that a lot of people aren't going to watch this, but a lot of people might still. Because here's the thing, folks. This movie is just another... Freaking racist uh, white erasure of white people with red hair. It's just another race bend. It's just another notch in Disney's uh, bid of evil inclusivity instead of actual inclusivity, which has been going on long before Disney uh, decided to go woke. I mean, people don't realize how inclusive Hollywood has gotten before... Everybody started losing their minds. I mean, shit, even TV shows from the early 2000s up to the mid-2010s had things like transgenderism and all sorts of things. There were black superheroes back in the 90s, and they're saying, oh, well, there wasn't a black superhero back or until we put it Black Panther on the screen. It's like, you're fucking full of shit. But, yeah. All this identity politics is just serving to destroy entertainment and make it not entertaining. It's, that's all people want to see or are screaming about in Hollywood. I can't identify with a character unless I am the same color as them. I can't identify with the character unless they want to shag the same type of person I want to shag. That All that crap is not important what is important is a good story good writing and if you are adapting a story from a previous iteration better to be as close to it as you can i mean change what you need to but stop with the race bending and gender bending narratives that's people are going to keep standing against it and they have a right to because honestly What's the reason you're doing it besides pushing a narrative? What other reason is there? Anyway, folks, that's going to be the video. You all know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of this new ending for Ursula? Death by Ariel instead of Death by Eric. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below, folks. This has been Orange Hat Reviews. Stay humble.